During two weeks ago, Top Gun Maverick has been shattering box office records, and now military recruiters are hoping the movie will do what the original did back in 1986, leading to a surge in applications to join the United States Armed Forces. Joining us now, Air Force Major General Edward Thomas. He is commander of the Air Force Recruiting Center. Commander, thanks so much for being with us today. Now, if Admiral Stavridis was here, he'd want me to point out that Maverick is a naval aviator and not an Air Force flyer. Uh, so I have to put that out there now. But tell me about, first of all, what happened in 1986 when that movie became such a hit? What kind of a surge was there in people interested in the armed forces? And what are you expecting here this time around with the movie such a hit? Yeah, absolutely. First, I got to say, Admiral Stavridis was one of my former bosses when he was uh, no. when he ran NATO. Uh, great naval officer. I've got the the utmost respect for uh, our naval service and naval aviation. But you know, back in the Top Gun got a whole generation excited about naval aviation, excited about coming and doing military flying and joining the service. And our hope is that as people go and see this uh, this movie, it right time. By the way. But they'll get all they'll get excited all over again about flying for uh, for the U.S. military. We're up around six hundred million dollars already through two weekends for the movie. Could push up toward a billion, Commander. So I'm always curious uh, when you watch movies like this, Hollywood's take uh, on the the Air Force, on the Navy, and how they portray you all. What did you think as you sat down in the theater and saw this version, the the modern Top Gun? Yeah, well, I've got to tell you, uh, the, the movie, frankly, didn't disappoint. I was just out of high school, getting ready to go be a cadet at Texas A&M right before my freshman year when I saw the first movie. Uh, this was every bit as good as the original Top Gun was. Uh, but in terms of what I think, um, you know, while Hollywood always is going to take a little bit of license as they need to to develop a storyline, the realism, the kind of scenes that we're watching right now on the screen, were absolutely tremendous. There is nothing that uh, I saw on the screen that our pilots don't do in real life every day. Now, you know, um, General, thanks so much for being with us. I, you know, it's so interesting. I'm uh, from Pensacola, and I remember in 86 when this came out, of course, Pensacola is, uh, as we always say, uh, NAS Pensacola is the cradle of naval aviation. So it was it was like Christmas every day. And wherever you went, everybody was talking about this movie. Um, but it's interesting. It really is fascinating. Sort of the post-Vietnam era, Hollywood's take on the military, much darker uh, the anti-heroes, sometimes just the out-and-out -out villains in the U.S. military. I remember when this came out in 86, it was a positive betrayal of the military. It's something, obviously, that Americans really wanted to see. We've seen that also uh, in, in more recently in some other movies. But this talk about this positive betrayal of people getting involved in the military, uh, getting involved because... Uh, you know, not only uh, because there's cool special effects that they see on the screens, but to make a big difference, something that we heard an awful lot about after 9-11. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I I'll tell you, we've got essentially a math problem today with military recruiting, and it goes to your question, but we've got a much bigger country, a much smaller military, a smaller base footprint. So there's a good chance that your aver average American today doesn't really even know anybody or have any close personal relationship with the military. So it, it's in all likelihood that the uh, the perceptions and the ideas that they get about what the military is all about is what they're going to see in Hollywood or on television. So it makes it that much more important for us to be able to work with Hollywood and work with uh, movies like Top Gun to be able to create a, uh, a, a, you know, uh, a perspective of what we do every day. Yeah. And, you know, Jonathan Lemire, um, I, I talked about the post-Vietnam era, you, movies like uh, Deer Hunter and others that looked at a lot of the things that happened in Vietnam, Apocalypse Now. But you go back to World War II, obviously. Uh, man, Hollywood went to war uh, for the United States and a lot of really positive uh, films about the military and uh, the service. We more recently, again, seen things like Band of Brothers. Uh, Top Gun fits neatly into those categories, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it does. After more skeptical looks at the military Hollywood produced after Vietnam and even some about the conflict in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, this does feel like a throwback to a previous era. General, my question for you, actually shifting from the silver screen to, to, to real life, uh, you mentioned the idea of, of recruitment, of more wanting more people to be involved in the military. Do you see when the war began in Europe, and obviously the United States not playing an active role, but we're helping uh, Ukraine fight back against Russia, but for the first time in a long time, evening newscasts, shows like this are, are full of, of scenes from a battlefield, from a war. Are, have you seen a corresponding rise in interest in people wanting to say, hey, look, we're seeing what the Ukrainians are doing with our help, that's such a noble cause. I want to do something similar here at the United States? You know, we haven't yet. I think it's still a little bit too early to be able to make a lot of sense of the data so far. Um, but I think what it does is reaffirm to the American people and those potential applicants to come join the military that national security is still a real thing, that, uh, you know, unfortunately, men have still not beaten their swords into plowshares, and we're going to need uh, a strong military to help defend the nation. Air Force Major General Edward Thomas, we're so grateful for what you do and for what all those men and women you're talking about do for our, our country, whether it's because of Top Gun or not. Thank you, sir, for your service. We appreciate you being here this morning.